Life can bring many difficult situations, domestic violence, addictions, poverty, and even sexual abuse by your loved ones. Welcome, Amy Cabo and The Cure. Good afternoon and welcome to The Cure Radio Show. I'm your host, Amy Cabo, with my amazing partner, Boris. This show was extended, ex- intended to expose the truth, educate, and provide comfort. God was the only cure for me, and we hope we can be there for each other. We address the joys of life, its challenges with God, our omnipotent Father, who is always looking out for us as our constant refuge. Life has trials, but with Him, above all things, who loves us dearly, there's always eternal hope and joy. That song was... Control by 10th Avenue North. Unworthy, yet his love is beyond imagination. Our frail minds can't fathom such perfection. O Father, help our faith as life takes its toll. Avalanche of storms, medicine to the soul. We always fail, yet time again you call us back. Open arms, assuring nothing there is we lack. Christ restores our soul, that we may be true, rescued despite all we put him through. Today we will be talking about the wokeness and the church with Alex Kochman. Alex Kochman, Director of Communications for the Association of Baptists for World Evangelism, has been a speaker on key topics of our current culture and society that only affect us as individuals, but also tie us back into missionary work. Alex, welcome to The Cure. Blessed to have you with us. Amy, it's good to be here. Alex, uh, let's dive right into it. How is wokeness affecting the church today? Well, one of the challenges in the church is we hear this vision articulated in the broader culture of a diverse and equitable and inclusive society and institutions. And really we're given this picture of all nations and cultures, everyone sort of just getting along. At least that's the rhetoric that's presented to us. And when I look at that vision that's being sold to us, uh, number one, we see the negative consequences all around us. My own father is someone who was forced out of the industry that he was in because of some of these cultural forces. Uh, But more to the point, we we also see how it can actually result in more division and more animosity the more that we're looking at these merely external aspects of people where Scripture says that God regards the inner person, right? But more to the point, what I actually see happening in the secular culture around us is is anytime you're you're seeing a, a vision articulated of every nation and tribe and tongue gathered. Well, to me, that sounds like a biblical vision, actually, only it's a biblical idea that's, that's severed from the root. It's the fruit without the actual source of that thing. It's a hollowed out counterfeit to what Christ offers us, which is actually a global kingdom to belong that includes all of our unique identities, but also transcends them and anchors them in something real. And so what I actually see happening all around us is a certain disenchantment because people want this vision of something that's global and expansive and even inclusive, but they're being sold a counterfeit. And the the real thing is the church that Christ is building among the nations and among the peoples, which of course is what we're trying to advance here at ABWE. It would, didn't God not say that the road is narrow, that very few will find? And yet I have had guests tell me that we're all saints. So are, are we all going to heaven? Is there not a mm. hell? Uh, and, mm. you know, as Catholics, we believe there's also purgatory because it's, God is kind. He likes to give second chances. Mm. <clears throat> Well, and, it, and it's a great question. But it, this modernization, and, uh, even, it's happened in the yeah. Catholic religion as well. I'm experiencing yeah. it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a it's a crucial conversation uh, for us as evangelicals, as Protestants. Um, we would we would share the conviction that uh, the road is narrow, uh, that uh, that those who find it are few. And, and there is this sort of Tower of Babel impulse that, that, that sort of wants to say, you know, we all as the world, as collective humanity, we put our thoughts and our ingenuity together. We can climb the pinnacle. We can achieve either fellowship with the divine or deity ourselves in some way. That's simply not the case. I made the point to someone recently uh, yes, heaven is diverse. All nations and peoples are there. Hell is also diverse. Hell is also yes. a place where there's all nations and peoples and tribes and tongues. And the differentiator has, has nothing to do with one's culture, or one's nation. The differentiator, of course, is whether or not someone has personally encountered the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and has embraced it by faith alone and has recognized that the Christ alone is the sacrifice that can avail for his people. And he rose and reigns now as the mediator for all who would come to him in faith. There's one mediator between God and man, and that's the man, Jesus Christ. And so as missionaries and as those who care about the state of our world, the most important thing that we can do is bring that message to those who've not heard it. Uh, because if we were automatically entitled to eternal life in heaven simply by being ignorant of the message of the Bible, ignorant of the truth of Christianity, then the last thing we should ever do is send missionaries to those people, because now all of a sudden they're accountable, and now maybe they're at risk of hell if they reject it. But rather, we know that the way is narrow. We know that to know Christ is necessary, and so we go. But if we were ignorant to sin, then how come there's still consequences to our sin? Otherwise, how, we, how do we discover that it's sin? uh it, it, ignorance doesn't cut it there's one way to learn and that's why god allows consequences but uh you you make an excellent point just the other day in church they said because that because of the new covenant because jesus died and took on our sins and died for us now we all have salvation and i thought to myself we he made salvation possible but it's not a given. Not everybody gets salvation. Those who choose to uh, worship the devil are not getting salvation. Uh, and so it's it's not a, a free-for-all. Uh, it's hmm. something that um, we owe our lives to God and we have to be fully committed. And so I wanted to discuss what is the root? What have we forgotten? And how have we gone astray? Because sometimes we interpret things the way that we want to and it's not like the Holy Spirit we'll continue about that when we'll we return be right back with Amy Cabell and the cure fix my continue with Amy Cabo and The Cure. Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in. Remember that you can listen to us on the radio through our show with the app, The Cure, with Amy Cabo, or our podcast, Just Look for God is The Cure. That was Fix My Eyes by King, King and Country. Focus on Him does it better than anyone. Salvation made possible by His Holy Son. Nothing compares to the love we share, comfort in his arms, life without a care. His will and purpose led by his inspired action. Heaven bound, oh, let there be no distraction. Motive to continue, empowered by his grace and perfect solution to every trial we face. We will continue talking about the wilderness invading churches with Alex Copeman. <clears throat> Alex, um, where is the, the original teachings that all life is precious, that we are knitted 
by God in the womb and taught the wisdom that we need for the rest of our lives, that we are chosen carefully by God to experience this life. Are we defending life in churches? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Francis Schaeffer said many years ago that over every abortion clinic in every city, there should be a sign that says, here by permission of the church. And unfortunately, for as popular as it is to talk about social justice and to use words like justice and mercy, uh, the issue of what's happening with the unborn in our country and beyond uh, among the nations is one of the most alarming things. And frankly, it's something that too few pastors and ministry leaders are willing to talk about. We know that not only are these unborn, precious individuals created in the image of God and deserving of life and opportunity uh, to, to live and experience life in this world, and we know that to snuff out those lives is murder and is injustice in the eyes of God, deserving of his wrath and only forgivable through Jesus Christ. But here's something else that concerns me, is that 98 percent of the abortion funding in, excuse me, of the pro-life work funding and ministry funding uh, that happens in the United States goes to attack the work of abortion in the United States. But the United States accounts for about 2% of global abortions. And in reality, 98% of the world's abortions are occurring outside the U.S. And so not only do we have a U.S. abortion problem, but 98% of our own resources are going to only 2% of the global problem. And as we try to make disciples of all nations and bring them the saving message of Jesus Christ, we come not only bearing the good news of salvation, we also come bearing good news for their families, for their children, uh, because uh, across the world, and not only in the U.S., uh, is this an incredible problem, and it's one we're seeking to address. So God says, uh, do not fear, I am with you, and do not be disdained, dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I would uphold you with my righteous hand. Isaiah 41.10. Interestingly enough, they call it choice, but where's the choice of the unborn who has a right to live just as the mother did? Uh, and so we, there is, uh, and it's not just, you know, attacking the most innocent and vulnerable among us. It's also the persecution of conservative beliefs in America. And wasn't there a pastor imprisoned for protesting in front of an abortion clinic? Uh, and, you know, sometimes you're silenced in social media if you're speaking about God. We're increasingly seeing that in our country. I think Aaron World's, uh, Aaron Wren's paradigm of the three worlds is helpful, that now we're in a negative world where whether you're a genuine follower of Christ or not, to even claim to be one is going to put you at odds with the broader society, and you're going to lose social capital whether you're serious about your faith or not. Persecution is not just a global phenomenon. Uh, it happens in the form of cancellations. It happens in the form of, of losing social respectability and social status here in the developed world and throughout the West. And it will get worse if we're not bold with the gospel now and if we're not exercising our calling to be salt and light in our communities. The same zeal that we should take to the mission field, where I think all of us want to send and support missionaries, we would believe in that, but we need to have that same zeal and seriousness for the work of the gospel here at home, or else some of the things that we value in terms of our freedom of conscience, we'll continue to see those things slip away. We should look to the example of persecuted believers, individuals that organizations like ABWE is working with, we should look to them as an example for our own faith as well. We need to stand firm in the faith and do what the Apostle Paul says, which is to stand striving side by side together for the faith of the gospel, participating in that fellowship together, even with those who are drawing the attacks for their bold stand in the faith, just as Paul was as he wrote to the Philippians. We should be arm in arm with those that are sticking their necks out for the kingdom of Christ. And we have to be evangelists. We're here to represent God and to exemplify his love. Uh, I'm seeing more on social media, young people coming out, speaking about their faith, speaking about God, what, they, what he has done for them. I've seen how Jerusalem, thousands of people are now praising Jesus, a religion that didn't believe in Jesus, only God. And I'm seeing Muslims turning Christians, believing in Christ, uh, Muslims turning 
uh, just believing that Jesus is the way and the Allah is Satan. I know that's hard to say, and, I, and but I'm not concerned about so much offending people as I am offending God. Um, and I, I firmest and go and defend him. I know that he's got my back uh, and I will serve him for the rest of my life in however way he wishes. Um, so they, they say that um, our society is spiritually bankrupt and what, what can we as individuals, how can we help out? Well, there's so many things we can do and we need to get our own house in order. We need to engage in the public sphere as well. And we need to devote ourselves to our local churches and not be missing on Sunday morning. But you also in, in what you shared there, I think rightly highlighted evangelism. The, the simple fact of the matter is that heart change doesn't happen apart from the gospel. You know, a hundred years ago, the organization with which I served, ABWE, was founded by a medical missionary who was told to stop preaching the gospel. And he kept preaching it anyway. That's in our legacy that we're not going to pursue social justice apart from. And we're all called Christ. to do we our part. To people the good news and about him. Each one of us has to step up. We'll continue talking about that. We will be right back with Amy Cavill and the Cure. Fix my. continue with Amy Cabo and The Cure. Hi, thank you for tuning in and uh, for being with us. That was I'm Gonna Let It Go by Jason Gray. When circumstances are beyond us, let him know that we accept his painful will to help us grow. Grateful that we're not the same as before. Loving him is what the struggle is for. He gives us divine rest, his holy love so immense. Jesus, you are our stronghold as it gets intense. What would we do without you, highest king, providing wonders, praises for all to sing? We will continue about the wokeness in church with Alex Kochman. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23, 4. Alex, uh, was Jesus an immigrant? I hear that at all, and I get the impression that he was fleeing persecution. Jesus being killed, uh, would that be asylum? <laughs> Well, we've heard arguments made along those lines. Russell Moore argued that in the 2011 column, that Jesus was a refugee. Now, we can point to things in Jesus' life where he does have to pick up and move, namely with his parents to Egypt for a time to escape Herod. But the real problem is, is it looks like we're all too willing to use Bible verses out of context to make some sort of a broader political point. And my fear is that when we see Christian leaders arguing that borders don't matter and border policies don't matter, again, what we have is this counterfeit view of missions where instead of going to the unbelievers and giving them the light of Christ, we're welcoming everyone into our country and, and thinking that we've done our obligation at that point. And we need to welcome those who come, yes, but we also need to recognize that God gives us order in society for a reason. And for those who know Christ, we're called to go. And there's no shortcuts for that. We're called to be a part of bringing the only thing that can change their lives and save them for eternity to them wherever they find themselves. God also says that to follow the law of man, and there's a difference between fleeing for your life and breaking the law because you want a better life. 
Uh, and so you, you can't just use God's word. And you made a very good point. People do use God's word to their own interpretation, therefore making themselves their own God. Uh, only the Holy Spirit can help you understand God's word. And it's there's only one truth. It's not many different truths according to the individual, I believe. Um, but uh, the, the church, as important as it is, uh, is in my, at least in the Catholic religion, is how we receive our daily bread. I like to go daily, but uh, the, it's very important because not everyone is has modernized or turned woke, and they do still read the word of God from the Bible in church. And how important, at least, it is, is it to give God his due, to do this in memory of me, to remember me, to to try to make me part of your life, if, if, but foremost, your priority. Mm. Well, and of course, Jesus uh, said that all who are hungry spiritually should come to him, uh, and not merely for the Lord's Supper, as important as that is, and we as Protestants would have a different view, but ultimately for the salvation of their souls, which is found through faith in him. And what we're doing uh, across the globe is to proclaim that gospel message. And we believe that, that that only happens when we put Jesus Christ front and center in our churches. The problem is, is we forget, you know, there's Christians all over the world, but we forget how many there are that haven't heard. And uh, by some estimates, there's as many as 7,000 or more unreached people groups. These are people that have no Bible in their language that they primarily speak and think in. These are people that have no church they could visit in their own language and culture. And they probably don't even know a Christian uh, who can share with them what is the same good news of Jesus Christ to be believed and embraced by faith alone. And so how are we to enjoy Christ ourselves knowing uh, how many of there are that don't even have access uh, to that news? And so uh, he's the only cure for so many things that we see that ail us as individuals, but also that ail our society. And, and yet we, we forget so oftentimes that as far as Christianity has gone to the corners of the earth, there are still thousands of people groups, of life groups, among whom this message is not yet known. And we need to take the news to them. Yeah. Yes, you know, but those are God's children too. We all have a different, our own relationship with our Lord and he will, guide us and lead us the right way even if we're misled if you even if we don't have a bible god will place somebody in the path of that person that will teach them god doesn't give up on anybody he wants to save everyone not everyone will be saved we have our own will we have to find that narrow road but uh i, I have faith that it doesn't matter how woke they how wokeness tries to infect all societies including churches or modernization or whether or not the the material is available, God is with us at all times, and He will get us to the right place. We just have to be willing to have faith and love Him in return, live His ways, and um, speak His truths. One thing that wokeness and, does is it says, "How dare you take that good news to others and impose your way of 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 thinking and believing?" And you're absolutely right. We need to take that message to others and be the means that God would use his hands and feet to proclaim that message. Uh, since be the light in the go. middle, be the light in the middle of darkness. And we have plenty of that these days, but the light is bigger. God is bigger. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, we've come to the end of the show and God bless you for what you're doing. Uh, I appreciate it. And so do many others. Thank you for having me and appreciate the time. So we will finish with a prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, I pray. I pray for self-control in my own life. I pray for walls that guard me against all adversaries, attempts to pull me away from you, to pull me away from my spouse, my children, from the work that you called me to do, for the way that you've called me to live. Amen. This is Amy Cabo. You have been listening to The Cure. Thank you to our listeners listening to The Cure with Amy Cabo. You can check out Amy's latest book, God is the Cure, on Amazon. And please check our website, godisthecure.com.